last day in January 2021. We're still here. We're still here. That's a reason to give God praise. You can still breathe. That's a reason to give God praise. You can still move your arms. That's a reason. That's a reason. So we're here to give him the praise that he's so worthy of. We're here to give him the praise that he is deserving of. Because he's been a good God. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity, another chance that so many didn't get. Yet you saw fit to bring us here today. So we say thank you, Lord God. We say thank you for the chance. Thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence one more time. Whether we're in the building or not in the building, Lord God, you meet us where we are. So we say thank you. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the honor. Thank you for the privilege of calling us friend. Now, Lord God, as we're about to start another service, just have your way. Whatever that is not like you, Lord God, take it out. Remove it, Lord God. Remove self from any of the things that we do here today, Lord God. Bless every singer. Bless every minstrel. Bless every dancer. Bless every parishioner, Lord God. Bless everyone where they are. Meet their need in this service and thereafter, Lord God. We're expecting great things. But above all of that, if you did nothing else, you would still be worthy of the praise. So we say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing, what you've already done, and for what you're about to do even now, Lord God. We bless your name. We give you glory. We say hallelujah Hallelujah. in this place. Thank you, Lord God, for another chance. In your name we pray, amen, amen, amen. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we give you all the praise. Anybody ready to give him some praise in here? Anybody ready to give him some worship up in here? Anybody ready to give him what he is doing here? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name, God. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever.
worthy of the praise today. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He's worthy of our worship. Glory to your name. He's worthy of our worship. Thank you, God. He's worthy of your worship. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Because he's been a way maker, a miracle worker, promise keeper. Every promise he's given. Every promise he's there's no one like him, no one like him. Just worship him wherever you are. Worship him wherever you are. Because he's moving right now. He's moving in the midst. And we worship him, we worship him, we worship him. He's here, he's here, he's there, he's there. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are a waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here. You are here. Moving in our midst. Moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. Working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. 
can't see you, you're working. Even when I can't see you, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can't feel you, you're working. Even when I can't feel you, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never, even when I can't see, even when I can't see you, even when I can't see, even when I can't see you, you never stop, 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 even when I can't feel you, even when I can't feel you, even when I can't feel, even when I can't feel you, you never stop, you never stop. Stop working. Melody, wherever you are. Melody, I'm speaking to you. You never stop working. He never stops working, Mel. Even when you can't feel it, he's working. Even when you can't see it, he's working. He never stops. He never stops working. He never stops. Sing it, Mel. Sing it wherever you are. Even when you can't see it, yeah. Even when I can't see it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop. Even when I can't feel. Even when I can't feel. Even when I can't feel. Even when I can't feel, you are working. Never stop working. Never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give him praise. Thank He's still God. making ways. Hallelujah. He's still making ways. you see in front of you. God is still in the working business. He's still a miracle worker. He's still a promise keeper. He's still a light around all of the darkness. He's a good God. He's a good God. Even though you can't see it, he is working. Even though you can't feel it, he's working. We bless your name, God. We honor you, Lord God. You didn't have to do it, but you did it. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We thank you, God. 
to move God. in this Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Hallelujah. This morning. Do you know him as a way Has he been a miracle worker in your yes. life? That is who he is to me. Is that who he is to you? A way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper. He's light in the darkness, our God. That is who you are. Right where you are, give God some praise. He never stops working. He never stops working. Doesn't matter what's going on in the world, he never stops working. If that is your testimony this morning, give God some praise. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. Hallelujah today. Give God some praise. Light in the darkness. My God. He's my God. He's my God. That is who you are. Hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah this morning. The, 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 the sanctuary is saturated this morning. We, we thank God for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah this morning. Right where you are. Just, just stop a moment and just give a shout right where you are. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Waymaker, miracle worker, our promise keeper. He's light in the darkness. He's our God. That is who you are. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you today as, as we do our call to celebration. It's found in Psalm 111. And, and we, can, we can say this with, with, with great expectancy and, and great assurance because the word of God says, praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. Verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have a good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Do you believe that this morning that we serve a God that deserves our praise? We, de we serve a God that is mighty and majestic. We're so grateful this morning that you have decided to tune in to be with the New Jerusalem Worship Center on this fifth Sunday of January 2021. And on behalf of our pastor, Bishop Calvin Rice, and our first lady, Sister Willie Mae Rice, I'm just so grateful that I could stand before you this morning and just greet you with the joy of Jesus. Our hymn for this morning is a, is a very simple hymn, a very familiar hymn for most of us. It says, when we all get to heaven, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, when we all see Jesus, we will sing and we will shout for victory. Wherever you are, Let's sing this song together. When we all get to heaven. Amen.
God this day. Our scripture lesson this morning can be found in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 43, and I will be reading in your hearing verses 18 through 21, Isaiah 43, verses 18 through 21, and the word of God says this, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past, see, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. To give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself. They may proclaim my praise. I take care of those that I formed, that they may proclaim my praise. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, recognizing if we do nothing else today, we must say thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for our early rising this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for meeting us as we journey to this place. We thank you, Lord God, for meeting us here, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your spirit is dwelling among us. Father God, we just want to lift up those that, that are under the sound of my voice, oh God, that need a touch from you. Father, you know all about their situations. You know where they need to hear from you. It might be in the quiet places of their bodies, oh God. It might be in the innermost parts of their hearts, oh God. It might be in the presence of their homes, oh God. It might be where they go off to journey to work, oh God. It might just be, God, the, the, the struggle that they're having within themselves. But God, we know that you're able. And so we ask that you meet every need that prevails. Father God, I pray a blessing upon our bishop, oh God, and, and our first lady and the, and the entire Rice family, Lord God. I pray that you would bless them right where they are. Comfort and keep them, oh God. Give them presence of mind to do that which is your will and your purpose. Lord God, be with this New Jerusalem Worship Center as we go forth to do a mighty work for you continue to govern our, our hearts and our minds. God, quicken, quicken our steps to do that which is pleasing and acceptable to you. We thank you, God, for the things that you've already done. We thank you, God, for the things that you were in the process of doing. God, we thank you for what is yet to come. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in everything. It is in Christ Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And amen. And amen. I come to you this morning with somewhat of a heavy heart. We've had uh, the death angel has visited the house of New Jerusalem, but yet again. And so I want to inform some of you, many of you might already know that our sister Iseline Hicks has transitioned. And her funeral will be this Tuesday, February the 2nd, at the J. Foster Phillips Funeral Home. Viewing is at 10 a.m. and the service is at 11 a.m. We had already shared with you the passing of our beloved sister Gloria Grayson Black. Her funeral will be here at the New Jerusalem Worship Center on Wednesday, February the 3rd. Viewing is at 10 a.m. and the service is at 11. Please continue to pray for our sick and shut-in. We've lifted up our beloved sister Melody Lambus, but we know there are even more, God, that just need to be comforted that need to feel your presence. God, we know that you are the great physician. You are the healer. And so God, we, we submit their names, call them out wherever you are, those that need an intervention that can only come from the Lord. We're calling on you today, God. Be with those that are sick and shut in. I have a special announcement to make today and I pray that you would lean in just a little bit because there's a lot that I have to say today and I need to make sure that you hear it and that you hear it with clarity. This today is a notice of a special online membership meeting of the New Jerusalem Baptist Church. Please take notice that the meeting 
which is for the members of New Jerusalem, will be held on Monday, February the 8th, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. The meeting will be held online via Zoom, but you must register for the meeting in advance if you plan to participate. Let me say it again. You must register in advance if you plan to participate in the meeting. And the way you do that is that you send an email to the receptionist at njworship.org. If you don't have internet access, you can dial in for the meeting, but you still have to pre-register. And so I'm encouraging you to call the church office and leave your name and the phone number where you will be calling in from so that you can attend the meeting. So there's two things. You can send an email if you have access to the internet and we will send you the link. That's your registration. We'll send you the link so that you can, you can connect with us on February the 8th. If you do not have internet access, you still must pre-register. I need you to call the church office. If there is no one to answer your call, please leave a message that says your name and the phone number where you will be calling in from on February the 8th at 7.30 p.m. Instructions will then be sent to you. That will be your entrance into the meeting on the 8th. So the purpose of the meeting is as follows. Number one, to consider and vote upon a proposal to authorize the refinance and mortgage of real property owned by the church. Secondly, to consider and vote upon a proposal to authorize a construction loan mortgage on real property owned by the church and or wholly owned subsidiaries of the church. And thirdly, to transact such other businesses as may be properly brought before the meeting or any adjournment or adjournments thereof. This meeting is by order of Pastor Calvin Rice, the person calling the meeting, and this notice is hereby officially issued. Amen? Amen. Hope you can follow. I'll be back again next Sunday to share this information with you again. God bless you. Today, we're welcoming to our pulpit none other than uh, a daughter, a daughter of the house, and it's in the person of Reverend Marcia Herrera. She's no stranger to us. We know that she is an anointed woman of God. And I know that God has poured richly into her. And I am excited to see what God will say to us through him. So after you have given your offering, after you have given your offering and the instructions will be provided for you on the screens, then the choir will present us with a beautiful sermonic selection. And then you will hear from my beloved sister, Reverend Marcia Herrera. Be blessed and continue to be a blessing. Amen.
believe that God is doing great things, great things in our lives. Great things, great things, great things. And he's also made us glad. Aren't you glad this morning? Glad to be under his covering. Before we even get into this song, I was asked to sort of introduce these t-shirts that we have on. And um, the t-shirts say, to heal a praise. To heal a means glorious. So in essence, it's glorious praise. And that's what we aim to do today. And every day, we want to lift up the name of God. We want to give him all the praise that he is so worthy of. Amen, amen. Because he's been a good God. The fact that you are over here in 2021 means that he's been a good God. So we give him praise because he's made us glad today. He's made us glad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. You have made 
very present help. Oh, my very present help. My very present help. Come on, if you know that he's your very present help, come on and give God a praise on today. Come on and lift up holy hands. Come on and magnify the Lord. Come on and speak well of him because he is great and greatly to be praised. We speak well of him because he's our God. He is our Alpha and our Omega. He's our beginning and our end. He wasn't the God that fell asleep, but he's a very present help in times of storm. On today, God, we bless you. God, we bless you on today. God, we bless you for your spirit that reigns in this place, for your spirit that moves to heart to heart. You are more than a song to us. You are a decree that you are who you said that you are, that you are not a man that you should lie. We thank you, God, for being very present help. God, we give you glory on today. Oh, the Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. And I pray, I pray, I pray that he is where you are even on today. That you would just continue to lift up holy hands onto your God. Be it in your living room, be it in your dining room, even in your car. Give him praise because he is a very present help. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give an honor to God who is truly the head of my life and the center of my joy. The one who rocks me in the midnight hour and kisses me early in the morning. God, I love him. I certainly give honor to my bishop and my father and my mother in the ministry. I own Bishop Calvin Rice and our First Lady Rice to this amazing preacher and sister beloved, our executive minister, our own sister Sandra Brown to the leaders and deacons and trustees and you and you, my brothers and sisters, into this ministry of worship. Praise the Lord. Thank you for setting an atmosphere where our Father could visit. We bless God. And I certainly thank God for my promise keepers because truly God has kept his promise to me with my beautiful babies, Asher and Avery. I thank God for them. Standing all over the sanctuary, would you stand with me wherever you are? Your sanctuary is your home. Let us just decree, this is my Bible. It is the word of God. I have what it says that I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I receive God's word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. If you would grab your Bible, your app, your tablet, whatever it is that you need to grab and turn with me to Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, it has been read for your hearing, but just in case we are just logging on, let's just go to Isaiah 43 beginning at verse 18. Amen. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals are me and jackals and owls because I have provided water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen the people I form for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Amen. Spirit of the living God, fall in this place again and again, God. Do not leave our presence, O oh God. Anoint this servant, Lord God, that I may decrease and that you may increase and they will see all of you and less of me, O oh God. God, I make myself readily available that I may be a compass for your people, Lord God, to help to navigate through even this season, O oh God. I pray, Lord God, that you will drive away everything that is a distraction, Lord God, and that you will bid Satan rendered helpless even now. Satan, you are defeated and the blood of Jesus is against you. Move in this place, Lord God, and I don't just mean the local assembly, but move to the global community, Lord God, where these, your people, have gathered, be it internet, social media, wherever we have gathered, that we will come and believe that where two or three are gathered, touching and agreeing, there you are in the midst. So move, almighty God, and do a new thing. This, oh God, is my prayer. In the precious and wonderful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. And so for the next few minutes, I want to speak to you from a subject, a new thing. A new thing. 
Everyone or most of us love a new thing. You enjoy shopping, going to the malls when the malls were available, Amazon. We, we, we love a new thing. We even love the smell of a new car. I mean, so much so that there is an air freshener that is called a new car smell with the intent to keep that replica smell. There's something wonderful about a new thing, a, a new relationship, uh, the courting, the, 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 the honeymoon period. Even on your wedding day, they ask you, do you have something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue? Uh, a new baby, if you will. There, there is something to be said about a new thing that creates this kind of euphoric feeling and absolute joy about having a new thing. A new dessert, maybe a new show during COVID-19. Certainly we have, some have packed on more pounds and some have been watched because we found new things that have kept our minds occupied. And I will be remiss if I do not acknowledge a new president and a new vice president of these United States. Oh, on the helm of an insurrection that happened just a few weeks before that, it seemed like the vision of hope would be smeared. Oh, but not so. Heightened securities and men and women who armed forces from nation to nation and from cities and states, they came together to make sure that the inaugural process would not be smeared because even though there was threats and even though there was lives lost in this horrible assault to not only our buildings and our people but our democracy, we still had to hold fast and believe God for a new thing. God whispered in January 6th while all was going on in the Capitol building. He said, hold fast, my brothers, and hold fast, my daughters. Hold fast because on January 20th, I will do a new thing. Thousands of women wore pearls from newborn to seniors. They wore these pearls in alliance with our newly elected Vice President Kamala Harris because she's a member of the Divine Nine. She is an AKA sister of the Greek sister hole. And we bless God because women that were not even a part of the sorority or the Greek fraternity sororities, what they did was they captured that we could align ourselves with different professions and different hues and whites and blacks and Asians we got together. Why? So that we can say God is doing a new thing. Look, my vice president looks like me. Glory. And after all the hell that we went through in the last few years, I would suggest to you, you can just lift up your hands right now and say, God, a new thing. We love a new thing. I, I, I sister to one of my son the other day, he picked up the remote control and he said to Alexa, Alexa, a new thing. And he was tickled pink when the, 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 the movie, a new, something new popped up. He said, what, mommy, that's not what I wanted. And he started to laugh because he thought that Alexa would pick up another cartoon show for him. And I thought in that moment, I said, how often have we asked God for a new thing and we didn't chuckle like Asher when he gave us a new thing packaged the way we didn't want it. Oh, I came to help somebody on today. I'm going somewhere. If you would look at the scripture, it says that the children of Israel, there was a few things that we need to learn from it. How are you looking at the problem, the situation, or the matter? Can you still see the hand of God in the wilderness? Can you see that he is doing a new thing? And I admit that I struggled with some of the tag phases of 2020, the year of vision. And it was namely because I didn't hear the prophetic utterance as much as a catchy phrase that met some sort of optical relationship. 2020, the year of vision. It made me a little more incensed, to be honest with you, that by March 15, that was the last day that we were gathering the sanctuary the way that we know it. And the following Sunday, my mother departed this world. And then three weeks later, my sister departed this world. And I admit that I struggled with the notion of 2020 being a year of vision. One wilderness experience after another, but I came to help somebody on today. The more that the year rolled on than the days and the weeks and almost a year into this battle and trepidation and anxiety and depression and the gnawing and the gnawing and the Black Lives Matter marches and the over 400,000 deaths, job losses, social distancing, 
cancellation of social gatherings, of milestones that should have been celebrated with family and friends. First to graduate from high school, from immigrant families and children with blacks and browns and these hues that are more likely statistically, they say, to end up in jail. And we miss the opportunity to see our young blacks and browns walk across the stage and we had to sit and do it virtually and I understood the struggle. And I don't know, Sister Brown, I wasn't really struggling with God as much as I was struggling with this vision of 2020 being a year of vision. And I know I'm not by myself because if you would be honest, you probably raised up your hands too and said, what in the world am I seeing? Oh, but if you're like me, I leaned into God a little bit more and I confessed to God. I said, God, I don't see what you see. And as I turned the corners on December, we were approaching the 31st of December. And I said, well, God, what will we call it? What will we call 2021? A bit of sarcasm, I must admit. But here it was New Year's Eve that we were being tested for COVID-19 because of a recent exposure in a family gathering. And I thought, this is a hell of a way to end the year, God. Where is the vision? Oh, I'm by myself. But I had to get up closer to God. And that's when he started to speak to me in this scripture. And he says, don't get stuck in the past. Verse 18. Isaiah writes prophetically to Israel that they were in a marred and desperate place. This captivity and this exile was gnawing at them. And God wanted to put their eyes on a new work that he would do. So he begins to remind them of the former things. It's fascinating because if you look between 43 and 16 and 17 and 18, there is a switch, if you will. Because God says, I want you to look to the past remembering the great things. And so he was referring to the Red Sea. And then in 43 and 18, he said to them, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. And this shows you that God is not saying, don't remember the past. God is saying, how will you look at the past? God is saying, I want you to look at it, not that you would forget, but that you would remember that I was a God that showed up in your times of need. My very help in times of need. I want you to understand that I love when Bishop says that faith is a collection of past experiences with God. We must remember. I often say it's not what you feel, it's what you know. Even when I can't feel him, he's working. It's not what you feel, it's what you know. And if you remember that faith is a collection of past experiences with God, then you're going to remember that he brought me through this and he brought me through that. You're going to remember Hebrews 13 and 5 that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You will remember that all sickness is not unto death as recorded in John 11 and 4. You will remember that by his stripes we are healed as recorded in Isaiah 53 and 5. You will remember during your times of trials and tribulations that he has kept his word as recorded in Psalms 37 and 25. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Behold, I do a new thing. Don't get stuck in your past. And I need to be real clear, and this is going to make a lot of you uncomfortable, but I I, I got to release because I came to help somebody on today. You cannot accept the invitation to these wilderness parties. Back in the days, we used to call it the waiting to exhale parties. Do not RSVP. Do not invite me. I'm not interested in your wilderness parties because people who are wilderness minded, they want you to set a tent where God is saying, keep moving. There's no time to get stuck in my past. I've been through the storms and I've been there with my God. And if he's moving forward, then by God, I'm moving forward too. That's the God that I serve. And I know this sounds a little like I'm not being empathetic. 
It, it sounds when you just say, don't get stuck in the past, that you're saying to people, just brush it off as though what they didn't go through wasn't painful. But I promise you, I agonized. I agonized about leaving 2020 because I knew my mother wasn't coming into 2021 with me and neither was my sister. I agonized like you, my brother and my sister beloved, because relationships changed. I agonized because familiarity and routines had changed. I agonized because the daunting task of homeschooling and working from at home had shifted my life. I agonized with it. But the truth of the matter is, although my world was turned upside down and your world was turned upside down, he remains the same. He is alpha and he is omega. He is the beginning and he is the end. And when he was with me, when we were testing on December 31st, he stepped into January 1 with me. And here we are on January 31st. I wish somebody would understand, you can't get stuck. My second point, what do you see? Verse 19. It wasn't until I grabbed my paraphernalia, the noisemakers for our in-house New Year's celebration and the eyeglasses that I heard the scripture again. And God says, what do you see? And I'm just the type of child that I answer honestly to my God. And so I said, paraphernalia. I see noisemakers and, and decorative things. And he said, look again, on January 1, I sat with the word, Reverend Brown. And he said, what do you see? And I looked at verse 19, and he said, see, comma, I am doing a new thing. And because there's a little bit of English understanding, we know the gram grammar of a, a, a comma is significant. And so I said to the Lord, wait, let, let, me, let me get this. And so he says the use, when I looked it up, it says the use of a pair of commas in the middle of a sentence is to set off clauses. Phrases or words that are not essential to the meaning or the sentence. That's multiple. He says, but when there is one, use of one, it is the indication or the pause that is necessary to understand the totality of the sentence. See, I am doing a new thing. Exclamation mark. That's got to get somebody excited about that. See, I am doing a new thing. And if you look at the Hebrew word of this pause, the understanding is that Selah could be incorporated right there because it is derived from the thought that in the book of Psalms, if you see Selah, it also means that we are to pause and we are ought to praise and we are to reflect on what was just said. I wish somebody would get that. English and Hebrew is connected right there. I wonder if you see it see comma praise and pause have you done that have you been still long enough have you paused long enough? Have you praised long enough to see that God is doing a new thing? I know that we've been on lockdown. I know that that has shut up the, the way that we socialize. But the truth of the matter is sometimes we are still so antsy that we are moving rapidly and we are not seeing what God is doing. Vision didn't die in 2020. Grab those noisemakers. Grab your glasses and begin to celebrate. I wish I could get somebody to celebrate with me. And it messed me up because when you you look at verse 21 it's right there he said the animals cannot praise me I know that you understand that I took care of the animals in the wilderness but my God brother oh my God sister beloved were you not in the wilderness was I not water in a thirsty land was I not manna from heaven did I not provide is my name not Jehovah Jireh the Lord that provides for you if the animals are provided for my people right there the people I formed for myself that they may proclaim and praise how could you sit silent how could you not open up your mouth how could you not praise him how could you not lift up holy hands and say Lord you are good and your mercy endures forever how could you not I'll tell you how because if we see it the wrong way we miss the opportunity to see God he said, if, if you see the shutdown and you, if you continue to see the positive tests, 
if you continue to see what the media is sending you about 400,000 plus, if you continue to see that we still doing church remotely, we're still on live, we're still Facebook, I can't wait to get back in the house. This just isn't doing it for me anymore. I, I wish these kids would go back to school. If you see it that way. I understand the, the mundane. I understand that it's monotonous. I understand that there's a roller coaster and depravity that's attached to it. I understand that there is chronic fatigue that is attached to it. I understand that sometimes you want to open up your mouth and say same thing, different day, but don't do that. I stop by to help somebody. In Lamentations 3 and 22 and 23, it says steadfast love of the love that never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. What are you saying, preacher? How do you see it? If you don't see that yesterday's mercy and grace expired and that he brought you into a new day, that this is the day that the Lord has made, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Then you miss the opportunity to bless him because he didn't have to bring you to January 31st, but he did. And so you've got to pause and praise. I wish I could get two people to do that. Pause and praise, my God. Pause and praise. I'm going to stay right here and praise you, God, because you're worthy. Before I rush and do anything else, I'm going to see love. I'm going to sit with this comma. I'm going to sit with this pause because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He brought me here. He brought you here. You may be in your kitchen, your living room, your dining room, on your way to work, but he brought you through it. So you got to give him a praise. Isaiah, in the earlier chapters of Isaiah 43 and 8, he, he said the people were blinded with eyes and they were deaf in their hearing. They, they, they were deaf in their hearing because they could not understand the relation to the old exodus and the new exodus. And I know that that's what is happening to many of us, that we cannot stand the term the new normal because it is likened to an exodus experience, an Egypt experience. But the truth of the matter is when you've got a pop-up pantry that is still supplementing the needs of people, that he is still who he said he would be. He is still Jehovah Jireh. He is still bread. He is still providing. And so we've got to recognize that if he is who he said he is, he is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore, then how could God's people, when we change the calendar and we step into the new day, how could we not bless him? We need new lenses of faith to understand what Isaiah was recording, that yes, it is a wilderness, and yes, it is a new exodus, and while Pharaoh may not be driving the helm anymore, praise the Lord, and our newly elect president is vigorous in wanting to express compassion and empathy, something we have not seen in the trenches for such a long time, our God remains the same. There is no veto and there is no voting. He is who he said that he is. He is king of kings and lord of lords. He is mighty counselor. He is a good shepherd. My third point, but the reality is, there is still wilderness. Now that we have left 2020, we were we remiss if we did not acknowledge that there is still residual effects. That is why we, we celebrate the pop-up pantry. There is still residual effects that school doors are still closed. There is still the residual effect. Israel had their trials, and we have ours too. The trials were inerrable for, for Israel. But it says in the scripture, if you pass through the waters, it says that if you pass through the waters, I will be with you. It doesn't say if you pass through easy street, I will be with you. It does not say if you pass through a bed, the bed of clouds, I will be with you. It says, if you pass through the water, and I started to get very, very clear on what God was showing us. He says, you will face waters, but I still spring forth. 
You will face wilderness, but I will still spring forth because I'm the God of creation. I was there in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. I was in Genesis and Revelation. He said, I started the thing and I'm going to end the thing. He said, I was there when I sprinkled the, the stars into the ember and I made it so that the daytime turned into nighttime. I was there when the sun refused to shine and I said, then there will be light and I called it a moon. I was there when I stopped the waters just at the shore and said, water go no further. I was there when I made the creeping things and the crawling things. I was there so I understand wilderness and while it's desolate to man and it seems like there is no fermentation, there's no place for harvest, God says I'm able to spring up in the wilderness and so if there's a desolate place in your life, if there's a wilderness place in your life, would you choose agriculture or would you choose your God of creation? I would choose creator. I wouldn't just focus on the natural of what I, I see. I would look to tag it with the spiritual things of what I don't see. He said, when you're walking through the waters. Now, walking through the waters means that you're walking against the current, the tides, the waves. And he, he says, sometimes it's going to look like rivers, and sometimes it's going to look like floods, and sometimes it's even going to look like fire. Acts, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel 3 and 19. Oh, uh, oh, ask Elijah when he was underneath that tree waiting for food to come to him. Ask the children of Israel as they wandered, waiting for manna to come down from heaven, and their soles of their shoes did not uh, break. Come on and believe that in your wilderness experiences that God can still do something mighty. He can still do something wonderful. And I know that we refer to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Elijah as though this tickled their fancy. But I want to be real clear. I just got to be naked and transparent before God's people because I understand it's not easy. See, they went in, when we talk about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and we're talking about a fiery furnace, we need to recognize that the heat of the fire, it did raise the hairs on their hand and I understand that you are mind body and spirit but here's the good thing we serve a triune God that is acquainted with everything that you feel everything that you're going through and he is more than able no it's not easy for you but it is so easy for our God 19 times in this text, it says that he uses the first person tense, me and my. This emphasis is to remind us that God really doesn't need us. He is the great I am. The great I am. That is the answer to all things. Who said it? I am. If God said it, I believe it and that settles it. And even if I don't feel a thing, I decree a thing. Because my Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that is recorded in Romans 8 and 26, it makes groanings and moanings and intercessions for me that I cannot make. But then I tag myself somewhere in 8 and 28 and say, but all things will work together for my good, for them that are called and love the Lord. And I sure enough know four or five of you that love the Lord. So say it with me. It's a wilderness, but I'm going through. It may not be easy. There's some current that wants to pull you back. There's some pushing that wants to pull you back into that place of complacency. But I, I, uh, Reverend Brown, I've heard people say this, and I, I wanted to just make sure that we understood that the shutdown means that you need to be doing something else. And I want to go back a little bit because we all have wilderness experiences. Now, for you, you may be dealing with your PTSD and understand that the trauma that has come from this last year is significant and it should be dealt with in whatever way it needs to be dealt with, be it medicine, counseling, it needs to be dealt with. And someone may have sleep insomnia and someone else may be tending to an ailing parent or loved one and someone else may be dealing with job losses and someone else may be dealing with broken relationships. And these are all wilderness experiences. I got to make this thing clear. Him homeschooling is not easy, and some mama and some daddy may be losing it because they don't understand common core. I just want you to carry the one, daughter. Oh, I'm telling the truth. I knew I would get you. I just, just carry the one. Just carry the one. There's five extra steps for the two steps that we learned. I want you to carry the one. And that may be my wilderness today. 
But the truth of the matter is if we don't tap into the fact that the church doors have been shut for a time and people don't understand that while you are still in the wilderness, the responsibility is still to follow God. And while you are following God, verse 21 says that you've been created to praise him. And so I, I, I get uncomfortable about the fact that when sometimes people say, I can't wait to get back into the church so that we can all worship, that means that they're looking for pomp and circumstance. They're still waiting for the praise team to pump them up. They're still waiting for the choir to do what they should have been doing in the last 11, 12, 13 months. You can't come back in here waiting for entertainment. You should be home in your wilderness experiences praising your God. If you don't learn it now, you're going to be faking it when we come back. We don't want you to fake it when we come back. We want you to have that worship that is recorded in the Bible in John 4. He says, the hour coming and is now where the Lord is seeking those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. If you could get it down packed in your closet, if you could get it down packed in your living room, if you could get it down packed in the kitchen, if you could get it down packed in your car, my God. When we cross out of our wilderness, when we get back in here, when the pews are filled, when there's enough vaccination, when we are out of this phase, what will the worship be like? Because of all of the wilderness experiences, because of all of our crossing over, because of all of us that refused to die when God said, come on. Still the wilderness. Still the God of the wilderness. I started to name this wilderness ain't new to God because he's been doing it so long. He's been showing that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we may ask or think of. He's been showing it for such a long time. That I get it. I get that it has not been easy. I get that there is some brokenness. There are some things that just broke your heart. But what I do recognize is that this is the same God that loved us enough to send his only begotten son. And I do recognize, I'm, I'm coming to a close, Reverend Brown, but I recognize this, that Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. There are plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. January 31st, 2021, I'm reminded that somewhere over 2,000 years ago, there was another wilderness experience, and this wilderness experience thought to take away hope. It was another kind of insurrection. They wanted to have the democracy take over the kingdom, but not so. It was a wilderness experience that was a democratic upset. They tried to vote on something that they put an innocent man to death. Barabbas was left and Jesus was crucified. And the thieves, they were jeering and the crowds were poking and the skies turned from daytime to night. And there was a total eclipse and darkness overtook the day and the judicial system was faulty. And there was some cruel and unusual punishment. And there was the torture at the hands of the officials. My God, another innocent man, he, his life has been taken. And there was no marches this time. And there was no one screaming, no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace. And they drug him from judgment hall to judgment hall. And they nailed him on a rugged cross. And Golgotha is where our hope was paused. What do you see? I see dark clouds. I see my Savior orphan forgiveness for those that didn't deserve it. I see a wilderness experience because there lies hope. And they call it Good Friday, but I, I had to pause. Because my Bible tells me that early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. He got up with all power in his hand. 
and he says, I will draw all men onto me. He got up, and so my story doesn't end there. The wilderness experience was not the end of our Jesus' story, and it's not the end of yours. He's doing a new thing. Look, I am doing a new thing. You've got to know if he's got power, I've got power too. He rose with all power. My peace got up. My healing got up. My joy got up. My hope got up. Come on, somebody. Your healing got up. Your hope got up. Your power got up. Your love got up. It was love that lifted me. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I'm his own. Social distancing did not disconnect me from my God. He is here. And I still have a praise. And so my sister beloved, and my brother beloved, I, I wonder if you would just do some crazy, like just give God a praise in your living room and give God a praise in your bedroom and give God a praise in your car. You need to go ahead and pull over and have a roadside assistant moment because God can do it right there. Come on and bless him because he's worthy. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the honor. He's worthy of the glory. I will not get stuck because I remember too much about him. I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitied every groan. Long as I live and troubles rise, I'll hasten to his throne. A new thing. A new thing. Thank you, Jesus, for doing a new thing in our lives. We bless God. We bless God for you and you and you. If you believe that and you believe on today that God is truly able to do a new thing in your life and that he has already begun a good work in you. I love that scripture in Philippians. He says, being mindful of one thing that he who has begun a good work in you, he's faithful to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. And I get excited about that because if he didn't show up in 2020 and he didn't show up on yesterday, that means that today is a day that he can spring forth. There's still something new that can come out of my wilderness experiences and that can be in your life too. It's just a confession. Lord, I need you. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you are saved. You don't have to come here, but you can email us and let us know that you are now a part of the beloved family of the New Jerusalem Worship Center. We love you. We want to pray for you. You can just make that confession right where you are. And I know that there are times that people say, I just want to get it together before I, I give my life to the Lord. No, your wilderness experience is what can get you together. He will spring forth and he will give you a life. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you may ask or think of. Call us. Let us know that today was your day that you told the Lord, go ahead to a new thing. I need it. Thank you, God. Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. I lift my hands in praise. Mm -hmm. Praise is who I am. I'll praise you while I can. I bless you at all times. And I vow to praise you for the good times, in the good and the bad. And I praise you. I'll praise you for the happy.
rest to rest, God, from the local to even afar. We pray, God, that we will see and receive a new thing. God, move, Lord God, anything that would be in trepidation, Lord God, fear, Lord God, that will not allow our faith to be operated in this wilderness time of this world. But God, we bless you. We bless you with our praise. We bless you with our exaltation, God, because you are still springing forth and doing a new thing. Have your way in our lives, Lord God. And as you do this, Lord God, we will be careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Whoa, I'll praise you. I'll praise you. At the good time and the bad. In the good and the bad. I'll praise you. When I'm happy. When I'm happy, you're sad. I'll praise you. All that I go through. In your I go through. Because praise is what I do. I owe it all. Cause I owe it all to you. Hallelujah. Praise is what? Praise is what? to this church to keep us up and running. Now, we have four ways that you can give. Online, you can visit us at njworship.org slash give. Or you can do a direct transfer via Zelle at njwc deposit at njworship.org. That's our Zelle information. We also have more ways you can give. It's Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can drop off your offering. You know our address. And you can also mail in your offering as well. Please continue to give. Like our bishop always says, the building may be closed, but the church is still open.